Hello everyone, Palitov here. Welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3. Our Grimgore Ironhide campaign kicked off last Monday. I did all of the episodes prior to this in one recording session. And let me say, I've been blown away by the response, you guys. Thank you so much for all of the positive reinforcement, especially on episode one. I was blown away with all the people coming out of the woodwork to say how excited they were. I got a lot of tips on gameplay optimizations that I can make. A lot of systems explained to me that I didn't fully understand. I just want to say that I absolutely appreciate it. It's been great. To recap our progress so far, Kolek was the number eight strongest army in the game. And then we declared war on him. I took over his capital city, made his nearby allies a little nervous. And now he is resigning in the Granite Spikes, a place I used to own, but he moved in and took it over. We are on turn 18. It's going to be a few turns before I can really get into position to do anything about him owning this spike. Spot. But hopefully we can very soon wipe his army off of the face of the planet and start to worry about our own agenda. Uh, money up at the top is not good. We are bleeding 140 gold every round. So that means I can't really upgrade any more buildings. Our population is still doing okay. We're expanding well. Basically, once I once I get rid of Kolek, our problem should be behind us. His ally over here, how strong are you? The 168th strongest army. My main problem at the moment is that Grimgor and company is actually pretty beat up. And there's corruption inside of this area that I think is stopping us from healing up faster. Uh, that was left behind by Kolek. So I might have to retreat to friendly territory. I'm really not sure how to handle that. But we'll figure it out soon. Also, uh, behind the scenes, I doubled the bitrate of our recordings because I recently found out that YouTube can take quite a lot of bits. Uh, so hopefully this video looks better than last week's. That'll be exciting. And I have a warm apple cider drink here to soothe my throat already. Uh, before we end the turn, one thing we could do to kind of help out our money situation is merging some of these weakened groups together. Uh, we're only at a negative 35 now. And the cool thing is, is I will be able to pick up new units once we make it back to town. Okay, so we solved our money problem, our army got weaker, and I'm still trying to get Grimgor to evacuate that northern corrupted area. Let's see how Kolek responds to this turn. Oh, it looks like Kolek's allies are asking for a peace treaty. They're no longer interested in being in a war with him. Uh, hmm. Keep in mind, we just attacked their building here and looted it for $7,000 or something. So, I don't think I'm too interested. I don't think they're a threat to me. And I want to have the option of taking over the province soon as well. All right, Kolak with his army, 18 strong, have moved back towards his lands. He's probably trying to get back to his capital city, if I had to guess. So, um, could... Oh, what's this? Could you... What's happening? Oh, I have a new quest. A goblin scout brings word of an unusual number of gyrocopters have been seen traveling back and forth between various strongholds. Okay, I'm not doing not doing that right now. I need to secure my lands first. Uh, Grimgor, get back to base. Hopefully you'll be able to heal up over here. Kolek is definitely on a warpath back to take his building. At least that's what it looks like to me. We do have a little money for recruitment, but we're going to have to do global recruitment, which I'm not super excited about. Currently, we don't have a front line, which is kind of a problem. Uh, Ublug could potentially make it to the city and reinforce us. Uh, he does have a lot of melee units. I'm going to give that a try. I don't think Kolek is going to dip back down towards towards my building. I think he's pushing in for his. Even if he does, we, we would be able to get back to that in time. I think. For an S-Technology upgrade, I'm going to get big and bullies. This is going to reduce our recruitment costs. I'm holding off on building anything in the challenge stone, uh, mainly because we're out of money. But ideally, I want to get this up to level two. But this is what I'm thinking anyway. And then get the thing that removes corruption, the rat trappers. 
uh, just so it's actually safe for my army to move on the ground in this region. This guy kind of muddied up the ground a little bit. Uh, Ublug is close with reinforcements. Let's see what Kolek does. Okay, Ublug is officially in range of my hero. I'm going to transfer as many, as many melee units over as I can. Because I feel like the rest of our composition is looking pretty good. We actually have a ton of archers right now. I'm going to transfer as many melee units over as I can. This means Ublug's army is a little smaller. We're going to have... Ublug inch forward a little bit, not too close, but in within range. And now Grimgore is leading the battle straight to Kolik. Let's get this guy out of this game. On the field opposite from us, the biggest rival we have had in this game so far lines up in an open field, ready to push in towards my army and potentially end our game yet again. He's accompanied by a massive amount of wild beasts. Um, this is new. A Chaos Feral Manticore. Hello? <laughs> bro, bro, what are these things? Oh, shit. Well, it seems as though he's had a little bit of a technological boom as far as his units are concerned. The last time we fought this guy, he just had maybe a few trolls. Most of his army were just normal infantry. I don't even know how to play around a flying creature like that. I'm going to try something a little cheeky this time. Grimgore and his army are lined up basically with their back to a corner. They are taking up the entire corner of the play field. So the idea being that his army has to push into mine. While he's approaching, artillery will be doing their job, hopefully hitting the back line. Our front line is told to hold position, so they will not move. They will not waver. And hopefully that gives our archers plenty of time to pepper in damage on anyone that walks up. Will this be successful? Well, his army is bigger than mine. Let's not forget that. But we do have reinforcements coming in to help. Uh, off to the side, Scram and his calves are in their own control group right now. And I'm just going to have them try to run in and flank something. Hopefully they don't draw too much attention. Oh, yeah. They're getting in formation. They're getting ready to push. I was kind of hoping that flying beast would come for me first. They don't seem like they feel the need to push the advantage here. Perhaps I'm a little too far back in the corner. However, just waiting is in my favor because we'll get a bigger army and then we can figure out what to do with them. It looks like they're actually falling back to take up the high ground. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, they won't be able to maintain that. They simply do not have the range advantage that I do. And reinforcements are arriving! Ubglub, back on the battlefield! We also brought in our little goblin wizard. This is his first time coming in for a fight. Well, our front line just got a lot bigger. We have more spears to take down the trolls. Well, if the main army just moves up and maintains this formation, which they should, everything else we just recruited can maintain the flank. We might want to put Scram and Ubglub in the same group with the Calvaries. That might be a good idea. Okay, the plan here is just to get the artillery in range and have them start shooting. Everything else is formed around that. And we are almost in range. The artillery is going to fire. There they go. <laughs> The enemy army is still holding. They are taking casualties with this strategy. I lost in the dark prince's name. Maybe they're just waiting for me to take the next step forward. It's just not going to happen. I have all day. As long as I have artillery and they're able to do this. I mean, eventually they will run out of ammo. Maybe we do pick, pick, pick a higher priority target. Maybe something like... Oh, never mind. They're shifting forward. Have you had enough? Well, they're going to have to do a lot of advancing through my range to get to me. Here, I'm going to go after these Forsaken. These guys are already winded, which gives me yet another advantage. I am holding my ground. 
The reinforcements are going to act as an army that wraps around and deals damage to the side. Oh, and it looks like it's time. Spears to the front. They're coming in. Our right side is getting hit as well. Let's make sure that our melee line is able to hold this. No one is here to flank around. Hold the line. Hold the line. All right, boys, here we go. Spears going in. Our cavalry leadership is going to follow. Right side flank is looking a little scary. I'm about to put artillery on this, actually. But we should be able to hold this line on the right. Oh, and look at that! The spears broke him immediately! Yes! Spears moving in on the other group of the vicious beasts. They should have this no problem. The cabs are moving in to reinforce this as well. And they are fully up to speed. This will be a pretty big scrap over here on the left. Let's get some of our archers involved in this too. But make sure we're still continuing to hold this left flank here. Right flank is looking pretty good. As the giant beast enters, we're gonna have all of the archers on that side focus them. Okay. Okay, let's pause and assess the situation here. I wanna make sure I'm getting this right. This is a very, very, very important battle. The left flank is going wonderfully to plan. Our calves are ripping right through these guys. They've almost completely broken their left side attack. I'm going to have my middle group of archers all focusing Kolek. We want all of that damage going there. Our left archers, rather than helping out in the scrap on the left, which should be fine, I'm going to make sure that they are reinforcing... What's your spell? I'm going to make sure that they are helping to eliminate this threat that might wrap around the left side of our main line. Meanwhile, over on the right, all of our archers are fixated on the Chaos Feral Manticore. I don't know how effective that'll be, to be honest with you. But it looks like this line is holding relatively well. Artillery is still managing to hit stuff over here. We want Grimgore to be right up at the front going after Kolek. And we'll just have the rest of our army kind of hold the line here. Okay, let's get it back up to speed. Let's see how it goes. Oh, these guys got thrown back. And Grimgore is actually having a problem just maneuvering through his orc front lines here. Okay, as they clash on the front, our black orcs are going to move to the forefront of that line. I just want to make sure everyone is attacking everyone that's in range for them here. We have a lot of sleepy units. That's unacceptable. They need to be engaged even if they aren't moving their line. Although they might be at the point where this is all considered like just just a good scrap and if they want to chase after whoever's in front of them i think they should be able to do that at that at this point uh left flank should be cleared up no problem let's keep it moving uh black orcs might take a lot of damage but i think they can beat that army grimgore is going to debuff kolek as they have now finally met in battle uh, I could give him some increased movement speed as well. I don't think that's necessary. At the, I'm just going to do it anyway. You guys have been telling me about Grimgore's Wah over on the right side of the screen. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I have trouble seeing green, so when it lights up, I just never notice. But look at this. It's here. And we're in. So this is going to give a massive damage increase to my entire army. Hopefully enough to get us through this sticky situation that we found ourselves in. Uh, the left flank is looking beautiful. Let's make sure everyone is still engaged in this fight wherever they can be. Kolek is literally running scared, but Grimgore is on the way. I want the Cavs on this too. Cavs, chase this man down. Do not let him leave. Archers are fixated on targets. That's looking great. Our Black Orcs managed to cut through everything that got in their way so far. Some cave trolls on the left side. Let's just make sure our archers are focusing those targets. This looks like we're running away with this battle right now. I'm pretty happy with that. That left side flank still proving to be kind of strong, though. We might need to pull more of our archers over to help out with that. In fact, okay, we do get the victory. 
Oleg is not coming back. He's not coming back. He is dead. I'm so proud of our boys, dude. Just a little patience is all we needed there for the victory. Beautiful. We got a close victory, which is exactly what the game thought we were going to get. Now, I am going to... I'm thinking about replenishing my army because we're still in a corrupted area. But I don't think really anyone's going to come over and fight me after that. And it does feel kind of good to just cut the head off of Kolek one more time. Okay, I guess I was wrong. Kolek just managed to run away a little bit. His army's looking pretty terrifying still. I think we're in range to fight him one more time. I'm bringing the fight to him. Let's end this! Decisive victory. You know what? That might be worth auto-resolving, although we would lose our cavalry if we did it. That's not worth it. Shit. All right, boys. We're weak. We're winded and we're tired. But so are they. And we want this more. If we win this, boys, I promise you the biggest war you've ever seen. What do you say to that? All right, this should be pretty straightforward. I put all of our healthy orc frontliners in this group. They are going to meet the enemy army head on with the archers in support behind them, hopefully keeping them alive. The weaker orcs, the ones that took the most casualties last time, are going to delay a little bit, but then meet up with the side of the army over here and hopefully wrap around and deal some damage. They also have archer support. Artillery is going to be doing its thing. Cavalry is going to be doing its thing. And hopefully with that, it will be enough. Let's go. Boys, you're first. Get in there. Don't be afraid. We're going to delay this just a little bit. Artillery is going to hit that l f uh, front group in the left, I think. Uh, I want to use our army lock on this if I can. I want these guys to maintain this formation at all times, if possible. Although the plan's already changing, isn't it? With the beast potentially flanking around to the side. I'm going to stop my army here and just try to shoot at these guys. We still have the range advantage. We should be fine. Hopefully. Grimgore's not afraid. Grimgore's moving in. Oh, God. Okay, the plan's changing rapidly, isn't it? I didn't mean to tell everybody to move there. Two, get in position. Three, get ready to flank behind. Grim, go, get ready. This is fine as long as they attack. We're good. Uh, Archers got here a little bit ahead of schedule. Grimgore is going to try to get in range to debuff the enemy general. But he'll be dead in like two seconds flat, to be honest with you. So will our front line here. He's hitting our weak side. He's going to get a lot of casualties. I'm worried about that. Grimgore, I wanted to pull you back. Instead, intercept this. We need to keep our army healthy. Archers, make sure you're attacking. Come on. Cavs, get in here. Hit him from the side. Are they fleeing? They will be soon. Okay. Perfect. We're in control of this. The army's already routing. The enemy general is dead. I repeat, the enemy general is dead. Kolek is no more for the second time this campaign. Okay, it was a quick victory. And to my knowledge, we didn't lose anyone. Oh, boy. We're going to slaughter the captives once again as Grimgore is victorious. Yo, is Grimgore level 14 now? That's actually... Oh, my God. We're about to be attacked again. <laughs> It never ends, does it? It never ends, does it? Okay. Uh, if you guys could regroup on this building, that would be great. Grimgore, I know you can't make it back in time. You've been going all over Tarnation. It also looks like they have another army that is leaving Granite Spires. We have to take this down soon. As Grimgore leveled up, I put some points into the boys, making it so our melee orc units and our archer orc units are more effective on the battlefield. We're going to increase Scram's defense a little bit. He's my second in command. I need him alive. This is for Ublug, our normal reinforcer. For him, he's just going to get more attack, I think. We have one more upgrade to go. This is Durbok. Our little guy who was supposed to just help us with keeping our borders a little more secured. 
I'm going to give him the ability to wound or make it more likely that it's successful. Break him off from our main army and have him go directly for this enemy army that's going to be reinforcing. That costs us a little bit of money to have him do these side missions, but... Uh, we just got a lot of money from that battle we took place in. We need to make sure we're using that as well. We can upgrade this to a level three greenskin burrow, for instance. And I believe that will end my turn. Kolek! No mood for your cursed yabbering. What do you want, Kolek? He's gonna pay me $800 for a peace treaty. Kolek, I'm gonna decline that, my friend. I can have my army take a raiding stance, which will make it so the corruption of this area doesn't bother them anymore. And I'm going to start moving Grimgor directly towards the one remaining building for Kolak. We're, we're getting this guy out of here, bro. Targog, what do you want? Military access? Wait, what kind of treaty do we have? Non-aggression pact? You're going to th give me $300? All right, Targog, come on. You're not going to attack me, right? Targog's my boy, right? By the way, only 205 factions remain in the game. 70 of them have been wiped out. And it looks like Karen of the Gord Hunt is coming to attack Grimgor. I guess we'll have to see how this plays out next time. The war march continues, and I hope to see you there. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button on the way out. Next episode will begin with a battle.